Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, that doesn't collapse too far. From moon landings to Mars rovers, NASA has a remarkable history in space exploration. But what all has NASA been able to achieve? This video will be the first in a three-part series that goes year by year looking at NASA's greatest achievements. So let's talk about that. Looking at NASA's greatest achievements is challenging. NASA has accomplished so much over the last 60 plus years that merely looking at a few different disciplines wouldn't be enough. Therefore, by going on a year by year basis, not only can we see what accomplishments they were able to achieve 50 plus years ago, but also how those accomplishments have changed or become greater over time. What have we learned from the past to build on to the future? So with that being said, for each year, I have picked one major event that has come out from NASA, whether it being a launch or a flyby of some spacecraft, something that we have learned to help improve the future of space exploration. But also we need to recognize that I do have some bias. And many of these years, there are a multitude of incredible accomplishments. Therefore, I try and limit it to either major accomplishments or major milestones, or something that could be a first for the agency. So with all that being said, let's begin from NASA's beginning. In July of 1958, when the United States Congress established the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, more commonly known as NASA. Now the first accomplishment from the space agency was in October of 1958 with the launch of Pioneer 1. This would be NASA's first spacecraft. Now although Pioneer 1 was trying to reach orbit around the moon, Due to an issue with the launch, it was only able to orbit the Earth and wasn't able to reach the lunar vicinity. The one vehicle earned a place in history as the first vehicle to pierce deep into outer space, traveling farther and faster than any other man-made object. Most important of all, it collected valuable scientific data that provided a new insight into the nature of our universe and changed man's thinking on space travel problems. So although it wasn't a flawless mission and did have some challenges, it was NASA's first spacecraft. In March of 1959, the Pioneer 4 spacecraft was launched and was able to successfully perform a flyby of the moon, being the first time for the United States that a spacecraft flew by another celestial body. Now going on into August of 1960, NASA was also working on communication satellites, more specifically Echo 1. Now this is very different from a communication satellite that we may envision today, because Echo 1 was a giant balloon that would be inflated to around 33 meters in diameter. Now this balloon, once inflated in orbit, would act as a communication satellite, such that we could bounce radio waves off of the satellite to reach other locations on Earth. Now this is pretty fascinating, a giant balloon that would be inflated in low Earth orbit to use for communications. Now, nowadays we use antennas and various constellations of satellites, but I personally think it would be fascinating to be able to see the balloon or essentially see this satellite from the surface of Earth because it was denoted that it was very visible from the naked eye, being a very reflective surface in orbit. Now going into May 5th of 1961, Alan Shepard flew the Mercury Redstone rocket into space being the first crewed spaceflight for the United States. Now the space capsule that Alan Shepard flew is currently in the Uver Hazy Museum in Virginia. Then less than a year later, in February of 1962, John Glenn flew Friendship 7 into space, becoming the first American to orbit the Earth. Now Friendship 7, or the capsule, is currently in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, DC. In May of 1963, astronaut Gordon Cooper flew Faith 7 into Earth orbit. His flight took a total of 34 hours and would be the last time that American flew alone to orbit, meaning that every American crewed flight since then has had multiple astronauts on board. Now, the capsule Faith 7 is currently displayed in Space Center Houston. Now, going into 1964, in July, the Ranger 7 spacecraft successfully imaged the surface of the moon prior to impact. 
The impactor took over 4,000 pictures of the lunar surface and was NASA's first major success in lunar exploration, after 13 consecutive failures in trying to reach the moon. In June of 1965, the Gemini 4 mission was launched, including astronauts James McDivitt and Ed White, in which they stayed in orbit for four days. During this mission, Ed White became the first American to perform a spacewalk. He spent 20 minutes outside of the vehicle, and when he had to come back in, he said, and I quote, it's the saddest moment of my life. The Gemini 4 capsule is currently on display in the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Then in June of 1966, the Surveyor 1 spacecraft landed on the moon and sent back over 10,000 pictures from the surface, being the first American spacecraft to soft land on the surface 10, of the moon. Thousand. Remarkable as a triumph of technique, yet now routine in a way, as Surveyor's camera obeyed every command, fulfilled every request. It sent back man's first close look at the mountains, the rocks, and craters of the moon. In November of 1967, the Apollo 4 mission was launched, being the first uncrewed test of the Saturn V, showing a major success. Now, the Apollo 4 capsule is currently in display in the Infinity Science Center in Mississippi. In December of 1968, Astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders flew Apollo 8 to orbit around the moon, becoming the first people ever to orbit around another celestial body. They were also the first humans to experience an Earth rise, where this famous image comes from. What you're seeing as we cross by sea are the craters Castor and Gilbert. And uh, what we've noticed especially that you cannot see from the Earth are the small, bright impact craters that dominate the lunar surface. The Apollo 8 capsule is in the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. Now, if we take a pause just for a moment here, recognize that in 1968, NASA would have turned 10 years old. So from their first attempted spacecraft, Pioneer 1, which tried to perform a flyby of the moon and failed, to 1968, where they were able to send three astronauts to orbit around the moon. That is remarkable in what they were able to do over a 10-year time frame. But this then leads us to 1969, where in June, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin flew Apollo 11 to the moon, where Neil and Buzz would become the first two people to walk on the surface of the moon. This event is notably one of the greatest technological accomplishments of all time and is a result of over a decade of notable missions and perseverance. Neil stated the famous quote, One it's small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now, Neil Armstrong Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Houston, Columbia, the high gate, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes. It's pretty remarkable that 11 years after the establishment of NASA, they were able to land astronauts on the surface of the moon. It's mind-blowing how much they were able to do over this time frame going to barely even able to reach the moon to successfully landing astronauts there and bringing them back. It's incredible. Now, with that being said, the Apollo 11 capsule is currently in the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. The next year, in April of 1970, astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hazy flew Apollo 13. Now, due to an explosion of the oxygen tank mid-flight, the crew was in a critical danger. And the mission objective went from landing on the moon to just bringing the astronauts home alive. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. In addition, uh, I have a shaft and trunnion. Okay. For a look at the Comet Bennett if you need it. Okay. Stand by. Okay, yes, right, sir, we've had a problem here. Some 
electrical power with the batteries or that will cause us to lose the main or the uh, fuel cell number two. Okay, we want to keep the O2 and that kind of stuff working. We'd like to have RCS, but we got the command module system, so we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. With limited power and oxygen, although this might not sound like an accomplishment, the accomplishment comes from the fact that NASA was able to bring these astronauts home safely. As there was major focus or publicity on this event, as the astronauts not only had to go back around the moon, but return safely to Earth. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Therefore, NASA's ability to adapt and learn from the situation was critical to mission success, or bringing the astronauts home safely. Now, the Apollo 13 capsule is currently in the Kansas Cosmosphere and Space Center. Over a year later, in November of 1971, the Mariner 9 spacecraft successfully orbited the planet Mars, becoming the first spacecraft ever to orbit another planet. During its time orbiting Mars, it was able to map 85% of the surface, sending back over 7,000 images, a major success to the beginning of NASA's exploration of the red planet. In December of 1972, astronauts Eugene Cernan, Harrison Smith, and Ronald Evans flew Apollo 17, the final moon landing mission of the Apollo program. Now, Cernan and Smith conducted three EVAs on the moon, being the longest time ever, totaling at 22 hours on the surface. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May, May, when they much to my surprise, a pair of bunny eyes. Now, with that being said, as of 2021, this is also the most recent crewed landing on the surface of the moon, being almost 50 years ago now. So hopefully in the near future, we will be able to send astronauts back to the surface of the moon. Now, nonetheless, the Apollo 17 crew capsule is currently in Space Center Houston. In the year 1973, the Pioneer 10 spacecraft performed a flyby of the planet Jupiter being the first spacecraft ever to visit the largest planet in our solar system. Now, Pioneer 10 is also the very first artificial object to leave our solar system, or to have a velocity fast enough in order to leave our solar system, which is pretty remarkable. Then, in December of 1974, Pioneer 11 also performed a flyby of Jupiter. And the reason why this too is a major accomplishment is because it was able to take many more images of the planet recognizing the great red spot, understanding more about the poles, as well as taking a picture of the moon Io. Now again, this was just a flyby, so it was only able to take so many images, but it gave a lot more insight into what the gas giant was like. In July of 1975, the first crewed international docking occurred, known as the Apollo Soyuz mission, where the Soviet Union Soyuz capsule docked with the United States Apollo module in space where the astronauts and the cosmonauts shook hands across the docking port to signify a future of scientific collaboration in space. Now, the Apollo capsule that was used is currently in the California Science Center in Los Angeles. And the Soyuz module that is used, or the Soyuz 19, is in RKK Energia Museum. In July of 1976, NASA's Viking 1 lander successfully landed on the surface of Mars. It would operate for six years taking pictures and record the weather from the red planet. Here's an example of a panoramic view of the landing site for Viking 1. And the last year that we will go over in this video is 1977, where the Space Shuttle Enterprise completed the first free flight test, where it was being carried by a Boeing 747 to an altitude over seven kilometers, marking a major transition from the Apollo era to the up and coming shuttle era. 
From this video, we have learned that there is so much that NASA was able to do during its first 20 years. Major accomplishments in understanding not only how to perform space flights, to reach Earth orbit and even get to the moon, but also exploring the outer solar system, sending missions to Jupiter, and understanding how we can land objects on Mars. There is so much that NASA has done over this early time frame, and we can already start to see the transition from understanding some of the main properties, rendezvous, EVAs, reaching the moon, and now transitioning into the shuttle era, which will be discussed in the next detailed video going over the accomplishments of NASA. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. If there is something during this time frame that you think that maybe should have been the major accomplishment for one of these years, let me know in the comments below. For many of these years, there are multiple events that I wanted to choose or select and replace, but I thought that maybe the ones that were exampled here could give a better idea of how exactly NASA has evolved over time. But I hope you enjoyed this video or learned something new about NASA and the space agency as a whole. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.